Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Open, Open Source, Source Show. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Open Source Show. My name is Jonah Bacon, and I build communities for a living. And my name is Jessica Dean, and I talk to communities for a living, whether on stage or on camera. So why are we here? And oh, wait, well, before we talk about that, this is a little odd. This is weird, isn't it? Let's, yeah. let's just yeah, wait, let's deal just... with the elephant in the room, which is we haven't co-hosted anything before. Yeah, there's not an actual elephant in the room. And we're stood in a room with a bunch of people who are watching us doing this right now. But yes. we want to talk about how to build communities and how it works. And you've got a very different level of experience to me. I mean, you're primarily working with, with, with the cloud, right? I'm primarily working with cloud or Azure, yes. Really kind of dynamic. You're like SEAL Team 6 of the engineering world. <laughs> but, and, so, and your background also, you've worked with some pretty big companies, right? And you also wrote a book. Yeah, so I, um, I led community development at Canonical around the Ubuntu mm -hmm. operating system, yeah. a GitHub and XPRIZE. Mm -hmm. And these days I am a consultant. I work with companies to help them build communities, either around a platform or a service, mm -hmm. a lot of developer communities, but also communities inside of companies as mm -hmm. well. And I wrote this book called The Art of Community, which is, you know, in all good bookshops. Uh, but it's my it's one approach to doing it. You know, it's, there's multiple approaches to building communities. So Because right. there's not one size fits all, right? No. You kind of... I, so, so for somebody who's trying to build communities, what are potentially like three takeaways or three tidbits that you can give from, from perhaps your perspective? Yeah, that's a great question. The, the, what immediately springs to mind for me is, first of all, is like have a very clear mission, value, like what, you, what kind of community do you want to build here? Yeah. Like what's the point of this? And you've got to be concrete about it. So mm -hmm. for example, you know, when I was at Canonical with Ubuntu, it was we want to build you know, essentially the ubiquitous uh, open source operating system. Which is, was kind of it. it actually, the, technically, the mission was originally Microsoft as a majority market share. That's bug number one. But those are the old days. But then having that core mission, that core way in which people can, can get involved and, and, and participate, whether it's developers or documentation writers, whatever else, mm -hmm. be explicit about it. Yeah. To me, the second thing is, um, is simplifying the on-ramp of how people get involved. Like, mm -hmm. This is one of the problems I always see. I'm sure you've seen this as well, is, is you know, we say, come and write code for my project. Yeah. But then to actually get to the point where you've submitted a pull request is incredibly complicated. It takes you two hours to figure out how to build the damn thing. It, you know, you've got to figure out where the documentation is and where to get help and all these different things. So have a clear on-ramp because most people are going to get stuck. And then the third thing I would say is figure out how to incentivize people effectively. Mm -hmm. Like what is the best way in which you can understand your audience and you can say, okay, I'm targeting, for example, developers. Developers, in many cases, want to grow their skill set. They want to build their experience and their reputation. They want to have a good career. How can we incentivize people along those goals? Yeah, you know? absolutely. What, if, what, what about you? Uh, well, so I just kind of want to like recap on those three. So I heard kind of like unify and simplify and then incentivize. Yep. And then taking all three of those, I kind of would also add in that you have to, with whatever category that fits in or whatever bucket, yep. the biggest thing that I see is having passion. So yeah. have passion for your community or the project you're contributing to. Because if you're not passionate about your project, you're not going to want to really focus on that unity and getting involved together. Yep. You're not going to care really if it's simple because you're not invested, whether yep. that's emotional or moralistically or whatever. Yep. I don't actually know if that's a word. I just made it up again. I think it is. I just make up if words. it's not, it that's, is now. Well, that's also part of my job. I make up words. <laughs> I've discovered this from today's uh, shooting session. Yes. And then finally, <laughs> I mean, even with incentive, the incentive isn't going to mean anything if you're not passionate about what's yeah. there. Yeah. So I think that's a big thing when you're looking at either existing communities or building up communities. But then along the incentivized thing, you kind of reminded me of one of Microsoft's communities, their VS Code community. Yep. We've actually done some really powerful things. I think the last study that I heard was 15,000 contributors to the VS Code project yep. on GitHub. Yeah. And then even over like 3,000 closed pull requests. So, I mean, there we've kind of taken all three of those practices and really yeah. kind of put it into play, yeah. which then our users can kind of use that as a model. Yeah. Our viewers can use that as a model. It's a pretty phenomenal case study for open source in action, I would say. Yeah, so. absolutely. And actually, so something unique is we actually have some feedback where we've gotten to reach out to the VS Code team. And so we want to actually hear something that they have to say. Let's do it. The VS Code community, we think it's a vibrant and healthy community. We really try to stay engaged with the community, like day in and day out. You can see every issue that comes in all the time, every day, 24-7. We have teams that are located in Redmond and in Switzerland, so we have actually the ability to have 24-7 coverage. We're very transparent with what we're doing with VS Code, so all of our iteration plans, our roadmaps, our issues are all public on GitHub. And we feel like that transparency creates a tighter connection between the community um, and the product and the product team itself. Because we have such a tight connection with the community, and because it's so vibrant, 
we feel like that enables folks in the community to come back and talk to us about issues that they're running into with a product, you know, bugs, whatever it is, which is invaluable when we're trying to build a product that's getting used by a lot of people. One of my favorite things is showing developers, you know, the cool tips and tricks, things that I do every single day. So one of my first favorite tips and tricks, especially because I do a lot of presentations, is the ability to zoom the entire environment. So I can hold down the command key, press plus, and boom, we can zoom the entire environment. Of course, you press minus, we'll zoom out. And one of the cool things in the latest release of VS Code is that I can now just zoom the editor if I want. So I want to keep the rest of the environment the same size. I can, I can just zoom the editor out. So that's pretty cool. Uh, second thing that I love to do is customize my environment for my theme. So I'm going to do uh, the one command that everyone should know, which is Command P. I'm on a Mac, it's Command P. If you're on Windows or Linux, it's uh, Control P. And this brings up something we call the Command Palette, which initially gives you the entire or access to all of your files. Um, but if I press or hit Shift uh, dot, do a greater than sign, this gives me access to all of the commands in the entire the entire tool. So I've already got color theme here. I'll click on that, and I, here I can cycle through all of the built-in uh, themes that we ship with, and these are all pretty cool. But really, what I want to do is uh, go look online and see what kind of themes we have there. Right. So I can say install additional color themes. I'll click on that. And what this is going to do is going to open up the extension viewlet here on the left-hand side. And these are all the themes, and there are thousands that are out there. The next thing I want to sort of show people is this last uh, sort of button over here on the left-hand side. We call this activity bar. Another cool tip and trick. Um, I can actually take these and move them around. So if I just click on it, drag, I can move them, position them wherever I want. In fact, I can right-click on that and hide them. So if I don't want to see that one, it's gone. Now to get it back, I just right-click again, and I get the whole list, and I can turn it back on. So we'll come back over here. We were in the marketplace uh, the extension view a little bit earlier. Um, I'm going to search for something. I love Docker. Uh, so all I have to do is type in Docker. You can see there's a ton of Docker extensions that are available. Of course, my favorite is the Docker extension by uh, Microsoft. And if you click on it, you can see over on the right-hand side, we show you sort of the rich overview of what the extension provides. And to install it, just click on Install. Boom, that was it. It's installed. The only thing I have to do now is just reload the environment. And that's it. Now we have the Docker extension installed. The marketplace for Visual Studio Code has thousands and thousands of extensions. Um, I highly recommend people go there and explore and then tweet about it. Let us know what you think. The best way to get involved in the VS Code community, number one, follow us on Twitter, at code, coolest handle ever. You can go to GitHub and you can, you know, one, you can download the sources, you can build it, you can run it, play around, see what you find. Uh, two, file issues, let us know if you're having problems or suggestions. Uh, three, you can go on Stack Overflow. You can ask questions. You can go and answer some questions. That would be awesome as well. So, I have a question for you. <gasps> I might have the same question. <laughs> you go first. So we've talked about a lot of different things. Uh, and some of these have been fairly high level and somewhat generic in nature. Yeah. I think a lot of people who are watching this are going to be saying, what are some concrete things I should focus on yeah. that I can apply in my communities, in my world? We have two very different sets of experience here, but related. What would you say are the most important two or three things that you would recommend to these lovely viewers out there? I think the, the first thing is making sure that you are authentic. So the community is going to be able to sense if your efforts are uh, perhaps, perhaps for personal gain or about something you don't necessarily care about. That also leads into the second, which would be passion. So have passion for the communities you're engaging uh, and the reasons why you're engaging. And then I think the third is to really make sure that you you know your plan, you know the big picture, you know what you want to ultimately deliver, you know where you're starting from, and you can use that to go forward. And then, funny enough, and coincidentally. <laughs> weird. <laughs> weird, it's like I'm psychic. My question is the same. So what would be two to three things from your perspective or from your lens? Yeah, I mean, what I would say is the first thing is be intentional. Um, don't wing it. Um, don't just set up a forum and see how things go or a repo and see how things go. Be intentional, be deliberate, have a timeline and hold yourself accountable to it. The second thing I would say is, is measure. Make sure that whatever you're doing, that you're tracking what's going on, you're always asking questions. You're developing hypotheses about things and you're testing them and you can only do that with, with data. The third thing I would probably say is, is, is realize that we're all a student in this. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years. You've been doing it for, I think, as long. And, and we're, we're never gonna have all the answers. And, and anyone who thinks they've got all the answers, frankly, is lying to you. Yeah is that 
every community is different, and we have to rea re realize that. And the data will help us to understand that. Absolutely. I mean, there's no one size fits all to this. Right. So that's the important thing to remember is get out there and, and try. And if you want additional resources, by the way, you can also check out opensource.microsoft.com. There will also be links down below to some of our favorite community resources. Uh, if you click on Jono's head, you can also go buy his book. And then also down below will be links to each one of our sessions. We are actually both speaking at OzCon. Yep. So we will finally be in the same place at the same time. Hopefully. 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 Can, fingers <laughs> crossed. And I just want to thank everyone for watching and for joining us today. Have a great day.